Today we'll take a look at the main differences between lifting belts, why you might want to use one, and how to get the most out of them when using one. Because when used correctly, lifting belts are a tool that will allow to generate more intra-abdominal pressure and lift significantly more weights than if you didn't wear one. I'm not sure if there's any actual data on this, but anecdotally I've seen about a 10 to 15% increase in strength instantly from using one, if you know how to use it, which we'll come back to in just a moment. So if you normally lift, say, 100 kilograms, putting a belt on might allow you to lift as much as 110 or 115 kilograms within the same session. It's not because they magically made your muscles stronger, but instead they allow you to unleash more of your real strength due to the extra stability you have through your midsection and how this may allow for better force transfer through your entire body. Now this may or may not be helpful for your lower back. Because even though a lot of the long-held beliefs in the fitness and rehab world say that increasing core stability may help to protect your lower back, this is actually very poorly supported in the actual evidence, with bracing and core stability showing very little relationship with lower back pain and lower back injuries. But that's getting a little bit off topic for today's video. But that should answer the first question of why you might want to use one and who they're appropriate for. If you want to lift heavier weights or reveal your absolute strength, they're a very useful tool they shouldn't be used as a crush to help to protect your lower back or anything of that nature. Now, this strength increase is not always going to be an automatic thing, as you do need to know how to use a belt to get the most out of it. It's not just a matter of putting it on and bang, you're stronger. There's a very specific breathing and bracing technique that you should be using to get the most out of it. It's this idea of creating a circumferential breath and brace deep into your abdomen. So if I took a deep breath in through my mouth and arched my back like this, which is what you commonly see a lot of people doing when they go to lift heavy, this creates this motion here at your pelvis and spine, which makes it much harder to create a stable brace. Instead, what you should focus on doing is keeping your pelvis and rib cage stacked as you inhale and maintaining a degree of abdominal compression, or what's called a hollow position. If you do it right, when you inhale, you notice an expansion through your midsection. A simple way that I like to hack this is to cue nasal breathing only to begin with. Most people will find straight away that they start breathing more circumferentially by doing this. You can try it out for yourself. Simply place your hands around your midsection like this and breathe in through your mouth and raise your chest. And you won't notice much of a change here where your hand is. But if you did the same breath through your nose while keeping a stacked rib and pelvis position, you'll feel straight away this expansion happening around your midsection and all around your body. And this is what we need to do when we're wearing a belt. Because as you inhale, your midsection pushes out. If it has an opposing force to push into, such as a belt, it'll increase the amount of pressure and force you're able to generate. Think of it like me pressing my arm away from me. I can do it like this with a lot of force, but if I had something stable to push into, I'd be able to generate even more force and use more of my body to do so. And that's what a belt is doing which is helpful for all lifters. Whether you have absolute strength goals or not, having this ability to generate more force will allow you to lift more weights, expose your body to more stress, and help you build strength that will carry you over to lifting without a belt. I personally don't use a belt all the time, but I do cycle into my training throughout the year as part of my own periodization plan. You don't have to do it, and I've gone several years at a time without using one, but if you're interested, it's well worth trying out. So with that in mind, which belt is appropriate? There are a ton of different belt varieties out there, but you typically see them categorized as one of three styles. These thick powerlifting belts would have this lever here or a prong clasp. Then there are these Velcro belts. And then you also have the variety that I don't have, which are those leather belts that have a clasp, like a prong clasp, but they also have a little bit of extra lumbar or lower back cushioning, and they taper in around the midsection here. They're okay, but I don't really recommend them as much. Reason being, those belts with the extra cushioning would be similar to me pushing not into a solid object but into a stack of pillows, which can create a very false sense of security whilst not assisting in my ability to create more intra-abdominal pressure. These types of belts are usually marketed towards protecting your lower back, which is kind of misleading, because all they're doing is providing some cushioning which feels kind of nice but offering as much support. They still do work, so if it's all you have, don't stress. But if it's possible, I'd go with the proper powerlifting belt with either a lever or a prong clasp. I prefer the lever because it's a bit more convenient to take on and off, but you do have to unscrew it if your body shape changes. These powerlifting belts can be extremely uncomfortable at first because of how thick they are, but they will last you a lifetime. You can get different widths, so you can always opt for a narrow width to begin with if you want to just get used to it. Another option that I do like is to wear the belt loosely to begin with. This doesn't just get you comfortable having the belt on, but helps to reinforce the right breathing and bracing cues. 
You can, of course, opt for one of these cheaper fabric or Velcro belts. As you can see, they're a lot more flimsy than the typical leather belts, but it does still provide you everything that you need to be able to generate intra-abdominal pressure. So you might not get the full effects, but you should still notice some improvements with using them. Whichever one you choose, just make sure you spend time to learn how to breathe and brace effectively so you can get the most out of the belt. So the next question is, when should I use the belt? A lot of you mentioned in my recent poll that you only use it on max lifts or when you're able to get above maybe 80% of your one rep max. While there is nothing wrong with that at all, I prefer wearing it from much earlier on, even from the very first warm set if I know that I'm going to use it on that day. It comes back to that bracing and breathing technique. It takes practice to get it right, and it will feel different even if you're very confident in using belts. So it makes sense to me to practice it as early as possible so you're not surprised when you put it on later in the workout. If I remember correctly, there is a different way that your body recruits its core muscles when wearing a belt versus not wearing a belt. So if that's true, it does make sense to wear it earlier on if you know that you're going to use it for your work sets to make sure that your body's prepared for it when the time comes. Now, again, I usually start with it quite loose to begin with, and then as I get closer to my top sets, I will make it tighter. Now, finally, let's take a look at the belt position. As you see here, I'm wearing my belt up quite high. It's up around my rib cage or even higher, as opposed to around my waist. Now, these are both very valid ways to wear the belt, and you'll see in some of my older videos I wear the belt around my waist and found it to be very beneficial as well. You'll also see many top lifters wearing the belt high and wearing the belt down around their waist. This really does come down to personal preference, experimentation, and comfort. Technically speaking, you can make the argument that you might be able to generate more abdominal pressure by wearing it up a little bit higher. This is because that pressure is dictated by the diaphragm, which sits up here around your ribcage and doesn't wind up pushing all the way down into your lower back when you breathe and brace. That's why I wear it up here and have since found it to be so much better. It also means that this thick belt doesn't get in the way if I'm getting deep in squats or hinge motions like it would if I was having it low. But that does depend on your structure. Just remember that the belt isn't there to protect your lower back, so you don't need to wear it down here. Wear wherever is most comfortable for you and allows you to get as much bracing support as possible. If you want to learn more about bracing and train to improve your breath and brace control, I do have full workshops breaking this all down step by step over on Gambaru Method. All right, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out Gambaru Method if you want a complete training, nutrition, and coaching resource. You'll be given all of my programs to work through, all of my education tutorials and lectures, and a full nutrition calculator and tracker so you can log your progress. As you do this, Gambaru will make custom adjustments to your plan to make sure you keep making progress long term. There's a free trial link in the description below, so go check it out, and I'll see you all next time.